Greetings, this is uh, Greater Grace Church of Chester and Ellsman Port. We're going to be live on Facebook for the next uh, half hour going into some very unusual passages of Scripture. But stay with us if you would like to hear something about that. Um, if you can, you can see our message for the morning, you'll realise what the subject was. Um, it's um, a nice one, an unusual one. Uh, but God is good, God is faithful. We, we preach on every passage of scripture no matter how obscure no matter how unusual uh, because that's what God wants the full counsel of God's word um, stay with us um, it's good to be uh, together it's good to join around God's word this is the first time you found us you can find us again at ggechurch.co.uk and on at YouTube at Greater Grace Evangelical Church and come and join us uh, come and meet with us uh, you can find us at Backford um, in Chester, at the school building at the back there, and you can find us, meet with us on a Sunday morning, um, get in touch with us as well, leave us a message, leave us a like. If you can hear us and see us tonight, please uh, leave a comment or a, a reaction so that we know that you are able to hear us and see us, and, th and that we know that people are watching. So tonight, let's uh, do this before any... Uh, further delay let's give this time to the Lord and uh, trust him and uh, seek his his heart Heavenly Father we thank you Lord we worship you now Lord and we just give you this time to you Lord we pray that you would guide us strengthen us and quicken us fill us with your spirit Lord heal those that need your special touch Lord we think as we were praying this morning for Lisa Dean, who's in the hospital, Lord. Pray for the operation tomorrow. We pray that you would lift her up, that you would protect her, that everything that uh, goes ahead would be perfectly in accordance with your will, that you would touch and, and heal there, Lord. We pray as they put that stent in, uh, that it would be a successful operation, that she would heal quickly. And that you would bless that family, Lord, as well. Touch each one, Lord. Be with the, the other Lisa as well, Lisa Mulligan as well. Touch there, Lord, we pray. For uh, Richard Gilsey and Ruby's grandson, as he um, has his first dose of chemo uh, this coming week, Lord, we pray that you would just really cover that. Uh, speak to hearts, Lord, we pray as well. And draw people to yourself, Lord. We pray for Mary Laflame. And any others that need a special touch, we think of Pastor Graham Phillips, Joe's father, down in Cardiff as well, Lord, that you'd be with him as well in the hospital. For Jane, for Tristan, for many others, Lord, in our midst that need your touch, Lord, minister life, Lord, we pray. And encourage hearts, Lord, now. Strengthen us and quicken us uh, and fill us with your life tonight, Lord. Help us as we open your word together. Help us to find uh, your spirit of truth. Uh, thank you, Lord, for what we've been able to receive this weekend. And just fill us with your life now in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Now, uh, for those of you who are uh, local and familiar with our church, we were just watching a session of, of a conference in Paris for a Greater Grace Paris that has been going ahead. It was good. We were able to see Pastor Boyce. Uh, I'm not quite sure whether it was live. I think it was actually slightly recorded. But uh, go and find it. Go online. Go on YouTube. Uh, great messages. Um, Pastor Shala, Pastor Texier, uh, Pastor Boyce. I think they even Pastor Tony Cooper. Didn't see that one, but um, uh, hopefully we'll get to catch up on some of them uh, and just really yeah, revel in God's word. We can't get enough of it. Uh, words of truth, words of life. Tonight we're going to look at, at um, Judges chapter 9 again. Uh, we'll read a portion that we read this morning. We might actually read a few slightly different verses, but um, it started in verse 50 of Judges 9. And it says there, then went Abimelech to Thebes, and encamped against Thebes, and took it. 
but there was a strong tower within the city thither fled all the men and women and all they of the city and shut it to them and gat them up to the top of the tower and Abimelech came unto the tower and fought against it and went hard into the door of the tower to burn it with fire and a certain woman cast a piece of a millstone upon Abimelech's head and all to break his skull and he called hastily unto the young man his armour bearer and said unto him draw thy sword and slay me that men say not of me a woman slew him and the young man thrust him through and he died and when the men of Israel saw that Abimelech was dead they departed every man unto his place thus God rendered the wickedness of Abimelech which he did unto his father in slaying his seventy brethren and all the evil of the men of Shechem did God render upon their heads and upon them that came the curse of Jotham the son of Jeroboam Heavenly Father, we just thank you, Lord, for these words, and we thank you for your goodness and your faithfulness. We thank you for your heart of grace. These words that sound very violent, very negative, very uh, uh, scary. But, Lord, we thank you that in it we see the heart of a, a loving God, a righteous God, a just God, a God of truth, a God of faithfulness, a God of mercy and a God of forgiveness and a God of grace. Lord, we thank you for your portion. We thank you for your truth and your love and your beauty. Fill us with your life tonight, Lord. Fill us and anoint us uh, with your Holy Spirit. We need you, Lord. We are nothing in ourselves. And we need your perfect revelation of truth tonight. Guide us this evening, we pray. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Well, <clears throat> I was asking Sean what we would call our message this morning, and he said, said pick the right tower. So we called it that, I think. Um, so, yeah, uh, there were two towers. There was a tower in Shechem, and there was a tower in Thebes. And... Uh, I was just struck by that as we read it tonight. Um, what did we see about the, the people in Thebes? That they went into the tower. And it says, And all of them in the city shut them up and got them up to the top of the tower. That's interesting as well, isn't it? we were talking this morning about how, how the Lord is our strong tower yeah Psalm 18 and many places in the Psalms uh, God is called our strong tower our high tower place of refuge place of security place of victory place where you have advantage over the en enemy uh, yeah that's great good and we love that image and we love that picture so as we said this this morning there was also a tower in Shechem well that didn't do them any good did it they shut themselves in the tower and Abimelech as he tried to do we just read about it he tried to set light to the tower in Thebes and kill everyone why would he was he doing that because he'd done the same thing in Shechem if you read earlier on in the chapter that was his his um, plan let's burn everybody up as they go and think they're secure in their high tower they're sealed in there 
And we were saying this morning that actually there's a difference between these two towers, isn't there? The first one in verse 46, it says, And when all the men of the tower of, she of Shechem heard, they entered into the and hold of the house of the god Beareth. Different God. And as we read at the last verse there, that we didn't read this morning, the very final verse of the chapter, it says that actually uh, God wanted to requite or render upon their heads the evil of the men of Shechem. and visit the curse of Jotham. Now Jotham, we'll come that on to who he was in a minute or two. Uh, Jotham was the son who survived. As it, we mentioned as well tonight, in the verse before, the one we just quoted, Abimelech, God visited his evil upon him. He had killed his seventy brothers, why? Because they were rivals to ruling the nation. God had established that they would carry on after their father, Gideon, and be godly leadership for the nation. But Abimelech, who was the illegitimate son, said, Well, hang on, let's have one strong leader, and I'll do it. So he killed all of his brothers to take power himself wow yeah and then the men of Shechem they helped him do it they had no conscience in that they didn't think that it was a bad idea they didn't try and persuade him out of it why well because they would be wielding power with him they were his support he made promises to them because well I'm from Shechem as well I'll see you all right if you support me in this. Then I will see that you are okay when I come to power. Well, we have to be very careful who, whose promises we trust, don't we? We said this morning that actually um, the picture of Abimelech is really a type of Satan, a type of tyrannical rulership. Uh, he comes and uh, he leads by force. He takes control against people's will. And he holds people by guilt and in a, in a power that they, they have no freedom. And those that speak against him, he gets rid of. Not very nice. But actually the Tower of Beerith the Tower of Shechem was dedicated to a foreign god. Now think about that for a minute. Two towers, one in Thebes, where the people actually have not sided with evil and they're led by the Lord. And God delivers them as they get up to the top of the tower God says no here's a plan drop this millstone on his head and you know you'll, 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 you'll avoid the fire now the other tower is dedicated to the god Beerith a different god here's a, a nice little illustration uh, for us tonight we have a tower uh, it's our stronghold, our fortress, our security. But we have to be very careful who is it dedicated to. Is it the living God? Is it the Lord Jesus Christ? Is it the God of freedom? Or is it a religious thing? You know, if it is a religious thing, if it is a different God, a God of man's making, and there are only two gods, there's the living God, or there's a God of man's making, an idol, 
a created God. Interesting, isn't it, that Satan was a created being. Lucifer was an angel who had been created by God. And he is known as the God of this world because people give him the power that he doesn't actually have. But um, a created God beareth foreign god an idol um, the men of Shechem they trusted in in Beerith and they went into the, the, the house of Beerith as their strong tower now think about this our, our religion that is not based on grace our, our faith that is not based on the living God what is it like think of a strong tower it might be our security it might be a, a safe place a place where we feel safe but are we a place where we feel safe but it's not actually the, the, the spirit of the living God it's a man-made religion actually that sort of tower is more like a prison the people who went into that tower they were trapped they were trapped they couldn't get out and um, when trouble came when evil came and the point was it was the evil that they themselves had already sided with that's an interesting point as well Abimelech was given power to reign in Israel by the men of Shechem. That's why we read those verses at the end where, where God says, and God requited their, their evil, and they requited and he requited his evil. Uh, why? Because well actually they were in league together and then they turned on each other. Anything but the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ anything but faith in God's grace is a man-made religion wow well, you might say well, that's a bit strict that's a bit harsh but it's true anything that is based on our, our human works our traditions our ideologies our, even our theologies you know we can make up things we can invent things on oh, this is the way it has to be done you know oh we only use the King James version of the Bible oh, okay fine oh we have to sing a hymn in this area oh we do it this way or oh, we have a, a denomination or oh, we have a structure and hierarchy and you know what we're not careful the emphasis goes away from Christ away from the freedom that we have in the grace of the living God God has given us such beauty, such freedom, such uh, amazing truth. The spirit of truth as um, is in John uh, 16. And he, the spirit of truth, will come and will guide you into all truth. Listening to Pastor Voice a few minutes ago, he was talking about how everything that the, the God the Father gave to the Lord Jesus Christ he gave to the disciples and how um, Paul says that everything that he received he teaches to Timothy and to Titus and asks them to commit them to faithful men who will teach it to others and that beautiful relationship of this is my grace this is my truth pass it on Pass on forgiveness, pass on mercy, pass on uh, that spirit of life, pass on the excitement of the gospel, the excitement of being forgiven, forgiveness of sins, releasing from bonds. The Lord Jesus Christ came to release captives. That's part of his uh, remit as the Messiah in Isaiah 61 
uh, released captives take away the, the, the spirit of heaviness uh, comfort those that mourn these are the things that, that, that the Lord Jesus Christ came to do heal the broken hearted well wow. if our faith is not based wholeheartedly on a gracious loving God whose word is truth it becomes a prison to us oh I have to do this I need to do this why well because it's my tradition it's my uh, you know I, I need to do it this way and I should do this more and I have to do this better and it's like no this is a prison this is somewhere where you're trapped religion has a way of trapping people but God is not interested in religion he's interested in a relationship through his son through the, the living saviour the Lord Jesus Christ who laid down his life for us that's the hope and that's the truth that we have and that's the, the love that we enjoy and the freedom that we taste is through that and the tower that um, was in Thebes it says they got themselves right up to the top of it and I like that image you know when we trust the Lord let's go right to the top let's get as much as we can you know let's let's go to the high ground let's go and, uh, and be as close to him as we can get not just oh I'm just inside the door no let's go for it let's really trust him let's get as much as we can let's be in prayer let's be in, in in contact with him let's be filled with the spirit of god filled with his word studying his word encouraging others sharing his word with people we were encouraged to be on the streets um this afternoon and you know it's one of the most life-giving parts of our week is to go out and share the faith that God put in us with some strangers on the street. Pray for Sarah, Michaela, uh, Ben, um, others. There were quite a few others, people whose names we didn't get. People were so open. But the story we heard this afternoon again and again was people who maybe even had tears in their eyes saying, I really needed to hear this now. To hear that there's a God of love, there's a God of grace and forgiveness, there's a God of hope and a God of healing and a God who accepts us as we are and will forgive us and a God who wants to reach out to us in love. People need to hear that they are valued. People need to hear that they are precious. People need to hear that Christ died for them and God put such a high price on their life, on their existence. And to do that, to share that with people, it is a beautiful truth and a beautiful opportunity. And it gladdens our heart. It does our, our heart good. Why? Because it reminds us of the God that we love. And it reminds us of the Saviour that we have and the truth that we are able to share. Every opportunity we get, let's share the love of the Lord Jesus Christ with people. Uh, let's be at the top of the tower as far in as we can get wow it's good it's good good news good uh, truth for us today like you say well this story doesn't really speak a lot about grace it talks a lot about all oh, people being destroyed and killed and God requiting it and judging and uh, seeking vengeance on the people who are wicked you know what yes wickedness does get dealt with because of truth and because of fairness judgment is there but the heart of grace says there is a way out of this for the city of Thebes Thebes there was a way out of the conflict there was a way out of, of tyranny and a way out of uh, the way of victory 
and it involved applying the rock applying the stone the millstone yes we'll wield the stone he said this morning this stone is Christ and when we come and we we apply the Savior to the situation then we have victory and then we are able to re release ourselves and our tower is not a prison anymore it's a place of security a place of the high ground a place of, uh, of victory a place of vantage and that's what happened that was how uh, they were able to win and how uh, Abimelech was defeated we said earlier as well that Abimelech is a picture of Satan and I also mentioned Jotham though there was the curse of Jotham that was mentioned <clears throat> and that's interesting we'll just touch on that briefly for a few minutes as well tonight because it's part of the story and it's a good part of the story and I like I do like that part and I'm sure I've preached on it before but it's very telling for the society of mankind it's very telling about how politics works as well because there's Jotham was the brother who survived Abimelech went and, and killed 70 brothers but there was one of them who escaped and that was Jotham and he cried from the hilltop and he gave a parable and his parable was the parable of the trees and it says in uh, yeah in verse 8 it says the trees went forth on a time to anoint a king over them and they said unto the olive tree reign thou over us but the olive tree said unto them should I leave my fatness wherewith by me they honour God and man and go to be promoted over the trees and the tree said to the fig tree come thou and reign over us but the fig tree said unto them should I forsake my sweetness and my good fruit and go to be promoted over the trees then said the trees unto the vine come thou and reign over us and the vine said unto them should I leave my wine which cheereth God and man and go to be promoted over the trees and then said all the trees unto the bramble come thou and reign over us and the bramble said unto the trees if in truth ye anoint me king over you then come and put your trust in my shadow and if not let fire come out of the bramble and devour the cedars of Lebanon now therefore if you've done truly and sincerely and that you've made Abimelech king and ye have dealt well with Jeroboam and his house and have done unto him according to the deserving of his hands for my father fought for you and adventured his life far and delivered you out of the hand of the Mid of Midian and you are risen up against my father's house this day and have slain his sons threescore and ten persons upon one stone and have made Abimelech the son of his maidservant king over the men of Shechem because of your bro of, 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 because he is your brother 
Then you have dealt truly and sincerely with, with Jeroboam and with his house this day. Then rejoice ye in Abimelech, and let him also rejoice over you. But if not, let fire come out from Abimelech and devour the men of Shechem and the house of Milo. And let fire come out from the men of Shechem and from the house of Milo and devour Abimelech. Wow, okay. There's a story there, isn't there, about godly leadership, anointed leadership, and man made leadership. There you have a little synopsis of uh, the political system, maybe. <laughs> but you have um, the different trees. Uh, the olive tree that produces oil that even goes to the temple and provides the lamp light glorifies God and olives are, are good to eat as well and then you have the fig again it's like a symbol of sweetness and you know in the days before they had imported sugar from the Americas a fig was a great source of sweetness and then you have the the vine uh, a source of of, uh, of beverage that they could produce the blood of grapes, the wine, uh, or the grape juice as well that people would drink. So each of these trees had a great use, and then you have the briar or the bramble, and its main source is just thorns, really. And the, the picture there is of like one tree that is actually the least use. The others have all got important jobs to do. Let's get on with, with the important job that we're doing. And the one that doesn't have an important job to do, well, oh, yeah, I can reign over you then in that case. But also that the, there is the, the chance that actually the briar glows low to the ground and often it can be a place where fire is kindled uh, and it can destroy the rest of the trees we have to be very careful who we put our faith in um, and there, that's a picture there really of uh, Abimelech this tyrannical leader and ironically you know the words came true that there would be fire that came out and destroyed them Abimelech he did end up by burning the tower over the heads of the men of Shechem because they put their trust in man and in wickedness and in idols and not in God and they put their trust in him and he turned upon them and God said no I'm not going to be mocked actually if this is what you want if this is the sort of society you want to believe, believe in and build for yourselves, then you can have it. But be careful, because it will destroy you. But actually, those that are innocent, the city of Thebes, uh, when they get attacked by these same people, actually God will come through and deliver them. So you know what, There's, there is a lesson there for each one of us as well. That actually, if we want works, if we want our own power, our own might, we can have it. If we want our own false religion, we can have that. But if we want the God of grace, we want the truth of the gospel, we want a God of forgiveness, then we can flee to his tower we can look to him if we want Christ Christ is there if we want forgiveness of sins forgiveness is available if we want mercy and grace then the Lord Jesus Christ is there God has not withheld him and he is there in power for any one of us to choose 
Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we just thank you, Lord, again. That the choice is often quite clear between the, the way of man, the strength of man, the wisdom of man, the power of man, the decisions of man. Man made religion and man made gods. All the truth of the Lord Jesus Christ, the power of the cross. Not man's wisdom. God's wisdom not man's system but wholly the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ the finished work that what Christ did was enough no effort from man behind nothing of self nothing of this world purely and simply the grace of the living God thank you Lord that you make this choice very clear to us and Lord we pray that if there's anyone out there tonight who's never experienced that freedom who doesn't know what it means to have a saviour and who desires that forgiveness then Lord we pray that this will be the time when they just say Lord I need you I'm fed up of making my own tower I'm fed up of my own rules my own human goodness I'm fed up of feeling guilty for things that I haven't done and things that I should never have done and I want the peace of knowing the living God I don't want man made rules and I don't want the worst efforts of men. But I want the truth and the freedom of knowing the living God. And a Saviour who laid down his life for me. Thank you, Lord. I trust you. And I want you in my life. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Okay, we're going to sign off tonight. Uh, my voice is croaking a little bit again. I don't know why, but there we go. Probably talking too much. So, uh, take care, God bless, and speak to you again soon. Um, see you, um, God willing, next week. Uh, Wednesday night, 7.30 online, uh, and in person in Backford, 11 o'clock on Sunday morning.